When the things you seek have been lost to time, look no further. We can go get them. We're Murphy's Inc. Murphy's Inc. is not responsible for any time paradoxes, historical retaliations, or other risks related to the delivered artifact. Any questions regarding the company's liability or tax information will be answered in time. Last time on Murphy's Inc., Isaac informed Gleason that money was tight and changes needed to be made. They agreed to send out multiple teams in order to accomplish more contracts. Daphne and Michael were informed they would each lead a team with one department head and one intern. While not happy about the situation, they understood the need. Isaac interviewed and hired a new team member to prepare meals to keep the squad on base. And Gleason made contact with someone he never would have expected. From the records of Constance Murphy, personnel file number CC89706, Philippe Dominguez. Born in America, Philippe transplanted to Italy upon discovering his passion for fashion with a side of old world history. Philippe is animated to say the least and occasionally snarky, but he does mean well. Not only does he get to spend all day, every day, making costumes and being around wardrobes and other fashionable accessories, but Murphy's Inc. is a place where he feels appreciated and accepted. Philippe is extremely business savvy, having a side business where he makes outfits for the elites. He may be a good option to one day help run the business side of this operation. What are we making today? Coins from Cyrene, 3rd century. Oh, you mean these? Huh, looks exactly like what we need. How'd you know about the contract? I didn't. These were supposed to go to a collector next month, but I guess your mission takes higher priority. It seems like my handiwork will be just fine, Philippe. As a currency, not as artistry. As a currency, not as artistry. Is there anything else you need for your trips? Philippe's already got the costumes ready for both teams. I will need some currency too. Just in case, you know. We're headed back to 13th century Baghdad. I'll get right on it. I guess that means all that's left is the interns then. Where are they? I last saw them in the break room. They're finally getting their chance? They're only one if they mess it up. <laughs> oh, hey! Uh, what's up? It's your lucky day. You, you're with Michael. Got it. And you, you're with me. I won't let you down. I doubt that. Is that it? Yep, all that's left is to gear up and jump. Where are we going? It's short notice, but my team's headed to ancient Greece in about 30 minutes. You guys have a two-way ticket to Baghdad, which will head out in a few days after the machine cools down from our jump. Hey, don't make us look bad out there, all right? Me? You're the one who should be worried. I've got this. <laughs> Go get suited up. We'll be waiting for you in the machine room. Yes, sir. Well, here we are. Welcome to Cyrene, ancient Greek colony in present-day Libya, circa 340 BCE. Are you okay, Philippe? It's only his second trip to the past. How do you feel, Philippe? To put it quietly, I... I... Uh, Everyone throws up the first few times. I would have appreciated a heads up on that. Thought it was just the first... Uh, oh, come on. Where's the fun in that? Stupid Michael. Stupid time travel. All right. We know why we're here. 
to retrieve an ancient extinct oh. Greek plant. Well, I wouldn't put it in those exact words, but yes. First things first. Let's head into the city and gather information. Right, right behind you. Don't worry. You should start to feel better pretty quickly. I feel like someone said that to me once. All I'm saying is that there's a concern. As you mentioned, the machine seems to be overworked. Perhaps there's something that we can You know do what? Later. I feel like we're just going round in circles. How about I let you take that? We can catch up later. Thank you for calling Murphy's Incorporated. This is Isaac. How may I be of service? Never mind. I wasn't alone. Status report. Did you secure the landing site before they arrived? Good. Did anyone see you? Excellent. The debrief says the steersman will approach them after they land. As soon as he leads them to town, I want that area locked down and combed over twice, leaving no stone unturned and report your findings only to me. Oh, look at that clothing. They are comical in their simplicity. A simple rectangle of linen draped over the shoulders and fastened in place. They look just like the ones you made for us. Good work, Philippe. To the untrained eye, perhaps. But I can see where I was off. I didn't get the red in the tunic quite right. Of course, given the little time I had to gather supplies, I could not get all my sample binders. I had to guess. I must correct this for next time. Mm, certainly, but can we focus on the mission at hand right now, Philippe? Ah, yes, of course. I am sorry. Get your laser here. Perfect. I'm raised flamingo. Did he say flamingo? One in Rome. One, this isn't Rome. And two, we're about a few centuries too early for that expression. Fair enough. We're on the right track. Laser was what they called dried silphium sap. It was a standard condiment in ancient Greece. Like salt and pepper? Exactly. Let's uh, head down this way, then. Impress your man with Silphium perfume. Silphium medicine! Treats cough, sore throat, and, uh, and bomb bites! Silphium feed for your sheep and goats makes their meat tender. The, the Silphium stocks for your dinner table! Boil it! Well, that was easy. Not that easy. We need the whole plant to cultivate it. Stalks and resin samples won't do. Gosh, um, this is also a bit much, isn't it? It's just one plant. The entire city's economy was based around the plant, as you can plainly see. They even imprinted it on their coins. That's how much it means to them. Take a look. Huh, you sure know a lot, Philippe. And here, I thought you were just a fashion guy. Excuse me? What? Just a fashion guy? I uh, meant it as a compliment. Never tell Philippe it's just fashion. Uh, that's not what I said. It's what you meant. <sighs> Remind me to belittle your life's work at the next opportunity. Oh, jeez. Sorry, Philippe. You there, you look like a discerning customer. I think she's talking to you. It seems just a fashion guy stands out in a crowd. Uh, it's because you're holding high value coins in your hand, Philippe. Pay no mind to these other stalls, sir. Their product is inferior. Krakopis Silphium is the finest in the city, harvested from the most fertile steppe south of the city. Hmm. 
are medicine can treat any ailment, cough, fever, hernia, aches and pains, warts, indigestion. Uh, snake oil much? What? According to the historical record, it was a treatment for all those things. For real? Did you do the readings before the mission? Considering I only had 30 minutes to prepare, I didn't have time to read everything. Or perhaps you would be interested in some other uses. I don't think there are any uses left. Sylphium juice for enhancing bodily pleasures. Aha! Now we are talking. Oh, right. Aphrodisiac. How did I forget? I will take two. Thank you for your business, sir. Hmm. Whereabouts did you say this was harvested from? The luscious highlands, four or five hippie cons southeast of the city. Thank you. Curtia, you look concerned. Follow those travelers. There's something I don't like about them. Yes, Curtia. That was a great question. Way to think on your feet. Thanks. And here I thought you were just a simple fetch girl. Hey! <laughs> Not funny. I disagree. So does anyone know how long a hippicon is? It's about 740 meters. Well, uh, 739.7 to be precise. Thanks, Gleason. Good to know you're still on top of things. Don't worry about me. Just focus on the mission. All right. Looks like we've got some hiking to do. Philippe, what are you doing? Hmm. Rather sweet. Knowing what it tastes like will help us get the right plant. Do you have any idea how reckless that was? It'd be reckless, not to mention embarrassing, to make this whole trip. And get the wrong plan. Uh, well, maybe at least give a heads up before downing unknown ancient drinks. Why is the fun in that? I'm afraid <laughs> to ask, but what's the second vial for? A backup. Redundancy is a basic part of planning, especially military planning. Isn't that right, Michael? It is. Do you notice any effect? Not yet. How disappointing. Hello? Have you come back to speak to me? Hello? humble servant. Ask anything of me, and you shall have it. Tell me, are uh, these two disciples of mine, how long ago did they deliver the eye? And where did they come from? I am sorry, my lord. I do not know. Our priests keep their origin secret. Only the nobles know its entire story. Are you not noble? Then how do you have access to the eye? Please forgive me, my lord. I have shamed my family, and I will be punished. I will sacrifice myself. No, 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 no. stop. Um, I forbid you to bring harm to yourself. My lord? Uh, I was only asking, if you are not of noble status, then why did the priest give you access to the Eye of Lord? We were in prayer. I was young. I was dedicating my life to the Norn when a priest held the eye before me. It made a noise we had never heard before. So they made me come to pray to you every day ever since, hoping for another sign of your blessings. Finally, it is here. I must tell everyone. No, tell no one. My voice is only for the chosen. Those who are unworthy will suffer... Unimaginable pain! You must keep this between us until I am ready. You have my word. You will be divine. Call for me whenever you like. I will answer. 
sir, in time. You are most gracious, my lord. I would like to learn everything about you and those that pray to the Norn, starting with those who are noble. The noble are descendants of those who were the first anointed by the Oracle. And they wear bracelets with a special charm to show their status. That is all I know. <laughs> is something wrong, my lord? Oh no, um, I'm just uh, deep in thought. This leaves me with many questions, uh, but I must go for now. Uh, you will call for me tomorrow, yes? As you wish. Ah, splendid, and remember... Still nothing? Mm, nothing. Mm. Fooey! You don't think that whole aphrodisiac thing might just be a placebo effect, do you? That would be very disappointing if it were. <laughs> so, if this plant was so important, why did they stop growing it? They didn't stop. They never grew it to begin with. Come again? They never figured out how to cultivate silphium. It could only be harvested from the wild. Wait, but our mission is to get a sample and cultivate it. Right now, we only have to be concerned with the first step. I'm sure our knowledge and techniques back home are advanced enough to be more than sufficient. Still, any new information we can gather about growing it while we're here will be helpful. So it was harvested faster than it could grow in the wild. And that's why it went extinct? Correct. The Greeks controlled it tightly. But when the Romans took over a couple of centuries from now, they were more lax about it. Without constraints, it was harvested into extinction. That's one theory, anyway. That sucks. Yeah, over-harvesting at work. Did you do any of the reading? Again, only 30 minutes to prepare. And besides, the reading was... Rather dry. No pun intended. I'm not a plant person. I'm not a plant person either. Am I the only one of us with a garden? I've killed enough houseplants not to want to inflict suffering on any more of them. Well, that is a horror story I will have to share with my petunias when we get home. Hold up. There's someone there. Where? Below that ledge. It's quite a beard he's rocking. What's he doing? He's drawing. Drawing? That, that must be a sheet of papyrus and a reed pen. It looks like he's studying that plant. Is it a sylphium plant? Does it look like the plant on the coins I showed you? Oh, I don't know. It has branches and leaves. That's hemlock. Don't mix them up. They're deadly. Doesn't look dangerous. I'd say he looks like a scholar of some kind. I bet he'd be more helpful than you two. We should go talk to him. Not so fast. We don't have enough information about this situation. Well, I can think of one way to get more information. Philippe, get back here. Hello there. What? Oh, greetings, sir. Don't be alarmed. We're just travelers passing through. May we ask what you are doing? I am studying these plants. I am a scholar. My name is Tertemos, though my friends call me Theophrastus. Theophrastus? <laughs> yes, I know. Divinely spoken it is not a humble nickname. But yes, when my friends insist on calling me. And you study plants? <laughs> yes, I intend to write a book on the subject. Perhaps even two. The information I've gathered so far has been quite voluminous. Oh, what sort of information? 
You are familiar with the underground part of plants? Um, yes. I call them the roots of the plants. Once these roots grow, your stalk then becomes an entirely separate new plant. Um, is this guy for real? He thinks he invented the word roots. Yes, he's for real. He's Theophrastus, the father of botany as we know it. Of course he came up with the word for roots. Oh, that's pretty cool. Say, uh, Theophrastus, are you familiar with the plant Silphium? Of course I am, my friend. We are in Serenica, are we not? Not only that, we happen to be what I believe to be Selfium's most fertile growing territory. Excellent. We would like to acquire a sample of the plant, and perhaps you can help us with finding one? Hmm, yes. I have been desiring to study the Selfium plant in more detail myself. I could help you. You would like something in return? I simply ask that you allow me a chance to study the plant myself when we find one. We can do that. Thank you. We will be in your debt, Theophrastus. Well, let us get to it then. Please, leave the way. Michael. Yes, Philippe? Are you using the father of botany as your personal tour guide? Yeah, well, you're the one who said he looked helpful. Touché. Okay, so the current drawings of this place are really bad. Uh, yeah. That's why the client seems to want us to find blueprints. If we can't find blueprints, I could always just make some. (laughs) Dear lad, blueprints are not something you can just make. They take time, training, and patience. The latter of which I have observed that neither of you seems to have much of. Whoa, wait a minute. I have tons of patience. I just have a hard time suffering fools. Wow. What happened in Vikingland? You've been so rude to me since you returned. Anyways, I know this may be shocking, but I have a degree in architecture. I call BS. Seriously? What would I have to gain by lying about that? I don't know, but... How has this never come up before? And why would you be working for Murphy as an intern if you could be designing buildings? That's for a different time, but I can get I this- I know a question to which any architect worth their weight should know the answer. What are the three rules of architecture? <sighs> Firmitas, utilitas, and venustas. Right. So you'll handle the blueprints. And of course, I will handle transcribing the books. What? uh, Hey, you have to cut this day sleeping out, or you'll stand out like a sore thumb in the past. Uh Uh-huh. As I was saying, what exactly will you be doing on this mission, Daphne? Babysitting. Your problem is that you should not be fertilizing in the winter. The plant is in its resting phase. Fertilizing it at that time burns the underground appendages. The roots? (laughs) Yes. You should wait until the spring, when your photonias enter a new growing cycle. Then they will be ready to take in all the nutrients you provide. Thank you. I will try that. So... This is crazy, right? What? Us just running into the father of botany? Well, it is unlikely. 
But the shopkeeper also said this was the best Sylphium area. Where else would you expect to find the father of botany? Since he's the one that named all the parts of a plant, I could suggest a name and he might use it. Please do not try to change history, especially just for fun. What if I tell him the flowers of the plant should instead be the steps of the plant? How cool would that be? Steps? Yeah. Well, the Stephanie's of the plant would be a bit of a mouthful. Uh, is, is that your name? Oh, my gods. Yes, Michael. That's my name. Oh, well, that's a very common name. It, it should be easy for me to remember now. Oh, because Michael is so distinctive. You know what? Maybe I should do it. Steps of the plant. It'll help you remember. Please do not change the timeline just to help me remember your name, Stephanie. Mm, no promises. Is that the one? Perhaps. Let me see. Oh yes, that is an excellent specimen. You can see the stumpy golden leaves, the umbels of small yellow flowers, and on top, the seed parts. Aww, they're shaped like hearts. What? <sighs> Nothing, she's confused. Please allow me a few moments to make notes. Of course, take all the time you need. If you allow me, I will do my own research. Oh, <laughs> you wish to sample the resin. I see where your priorities are, my friend. Oh yes, that's the same stuff I tried earlier. Earlier? When? We purchased a vial earlier today, in the marketplace. That is too close together. Never more than one dosing per day. The effect will be... significant. Um, what does that mean? You will not be able to control yourself. Uh... We better hurry this up then. Are you finished? Yes, let us dig up the plant, allow me to examine the roots, and then you may take it. Come on, let's get our hands dirty. I've got it! Hold it up for me, please. Like this? Yes, yes. <laughs> As you can see, the roots are quite long. Let me measure. Roughly from my elbow to the tips of my fingers, they are thick and stout, and appear to be covered in a black bark. Fascinating, yes. Are you done? Yes, yes, you may take it. Hey, easy! Shh, someone's coming. We should hide. What? Why? What we have done is unauthorized. What? The Kekra Pass Guild has exclusive harvesting rights in this territory. Furthermore, uprooting a civilian plant like this is a particularly egregious offense. Mm. What in the blue hell? Why didn't you tell us that? I wish to study the plants. If you're going to dig it up anyway, my research may as well benefit from it. What kind of reasoning is that? Quite sound reasoning, I believe. Come, come this way. Mm. Philippe, are you okay? Keep quiet. Look at this. Cordia was right. They were up to no good. That's the area. Gleason, do you copy? Oh, uh, I'm here. Can you get us out of here? Ah, uh, absolutely not. The machine is nowhere near cooled down enough. Plus, I believe you have a witness in front of you. And an important one at that. Yeah, I had to ask. I'm sorry, Michael, but it will be at least a couple of days. Good luck. Ooh. Philippe, what the hell is wrong with you? The Sophium is having its effect on him. Oh, how I love a man in uniform. I'm not even in my uniform, Philippe. No, but I can imagine you in it. What branch were you in again? Army Special mm. Forces, stop touching me! Oh, yes. With the green beret. 
the midnight blue jacket, the wide flare collar, the deltoid definition divided by the shoulder straps. Get a hold of yourself, man. The guards are right there and closing in on our position. Oh, the chance of being caught in flagrante delicto makes it even more exciting. Oh, man. Mm. Mm. Get off of me, Philippe. There, you, raise your hands. What do you have? A Sophia implant? I knew it, you thieves. You'll pay for this. Oh, boy. Are you feeling now? Same I felt since you brought me here. Disoriented, hot, and pissed off. Well, perhaps we can talk about your employee, Philippe Dominguez. Perhaps that will help you to focus and calm down. Aren't you supposed to be all-knowing and all-seeing? What do you need to ask me about Philippe that you don't already know? While we know the big picture, learning your kind's nuances is very interesting. Tell me, where did you meet Philippe? I was on a much-needed holiday, cruising around the Mediterranean. We had finished a contract for a client, which was an absolute disaster. While we were able to complete the contract, I lost one of the best agents that has ever worked for me simply because the clothing they were wearing was just not quite right for the locale and time. You have had many successful contracts before this incident. Why do you think this one was different? I don't know. To this day, it still gets under my skin. I've lost agents before and since, but not over something as simple as clothing. While on my cruise, we made port in southern Italy for a few days. I heard about a fashion school with a lot of bright, up-and-coming individuals. One, specifically, that also had a deep passion for history. Upon returning from my holiday, I invited Philippe to fly halfway around the world to meet with me. We had two meetings over two days, and when I played my ace, he was hooked. Do you believe he came to work for you because he believes in what you do? Or because it provided him the opportunity to combine two things that he enjoys? Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. What matters is that I have someone to assure me that I will never lose another person over something as silly as an outfit. This episode was written by Darren Joe, Ashley Dean, Tyrus Rayner, and Mark Helton. Directed by Lawrence Iriarte. Produced by Mark Helton, James Devereaux Lewis, and Tara Eon. Audio editing and effects by Joe Bly with Kiana Music. Original music by Louis Palfrey. Original artwork by Michael Leone with The Cloned Ones, LLC. This episode featured the voice talents of Kirsty Harrison as Murphy, Jenny Helton as Daphne, Shandon Loring as Michael, Mark C. Helton as Gleason, Tyrus Rayner as Isaac, Carrie Hampton as Hart, Quinn Caferata Jenkins as Philippe, Kaz Chandler as The Librarian, Stephanie Bauman as Intern 1, James Devro Lewis as Intern 2, with Anita Kelly as Sylvia, Michelle Calhoun as The Interrogator, Laura Landry as Marie, Seishora as Theophrastus, Rachel Vale Anderson as the shopkeeper, Havish Ravapati as Vendor 1 and Company Worker, Frank Riley as Vendor 2 and Door Guard, and I'm Connor Howard, your announcer. This series is developed and proudly produced by 97 to Now Productions. For more information about the show, please visit our website. Tune in next time as Murphy's Inc. continues. <laughs>